So what I plan to do is to show micro profile, some tricks, then deployment tricks, a little bit Kubernetes, a little bit Quarkus at the end. It is not in the agenda because it was not available as I submitted the paper. So uh, I think something like this, right? So I'm asking you whether this is any, any questions regarding Jakarta micro profile? No questions so far. So we can take the time for questions and then we start with or without these slides. So, so the first time no one has questions. So the people in where I was in Gdansk were better than you. They had a lots of questions. It's a different topic, but. Oh, so they are, you, you only have the answers, right? <laughs> I should ask questions and then you can answer. Okay. All. Oh. All. And the reason is, uh, the question was, you know, how many projects I'm using MicroProfile already? And uh, the reason is, um, I ignored actually MicroProfile completely for a while, because uh, for me it was crazy to be dependent on some strange runtime. Okay. But what happens one and a half year before? All major application servers have MicroProfile. So I actually use MicroProfile without asking for permission, because it's there. So for me, MicroProfile is like a part of the platform. Uh, depends on the clients. So uh, some clients running Whitefly. So we patch. Uh, we use small, uh, how it's called small Rye to uh, have more functionality. Payara is pretty complete. Uh, some larger projects running on Open Liberty, and one project on Tommy. And right now, uh, most of my projects are Payara, but this is historical reason. So I, I, I did a lot of Glassfish, and now they have Payara. But uh, Whitefly is very popular as well. And my. I think what will happen, Quarkus will take off as well. So let's show you why. No, no, it is too early. But in one project, we have a massive amount of data. Like, uh, I forgot actually this crazy number. It's like uh, this, uh, the IoT device is sending us like a half gig per second or something, or either half gig or 500 gigs. So it's this incredible amount of, of, of things. And we probably will use Quarkus like uh, edge load balancers. So build small things as load balancer. And right now it is white fly, uh, everything. And uh, it processes incredible amount of transactions. But uh, this could be uh, the first uh, thing where we will have to scale now up and down early or fast. Any other questions? And most of projects are actually more boring than you might think. So at conferences, everything looks like, you know, cold fusion and and quantum computing. But in the real world, it's like, you know, you're happy with modern Java. And yeah, this is why. Why Quarkus could be interesting. So any other questions? So you don't have to ask because you know everything. There are 42. This is the team 42. It was hard to find the room. I spent 15 minutes to find it. It's what like. I think so. I never was here, but this is nice because I can sit down. This is crazy to code. I never do this. So this is better for me. I think we can start. Nine. So, uh, hello, my name is Adam Bean, and uh, I'm working as still as a consultant. It's still really interesting. I spent uh, half of my time, uh, or yeah, uh, more than half of my time on backends. S nothing changed so far, except I use a little bit more, or uh, always, micro profile, because uh, it is available everywhere. And at the and and the front end, uh, I'm actually do the same. What in the back end, I'm deleting frameworks. So uh, uh, I'm, I spend lots of time, you know, with web standards, just removing Angular because uh, uh, clients don't like it anymore. They don't like too 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 many migrations without a reason. And um, and uh, some developers love it, and the others uh, not so. And uh, for me, I don't get it. Why we need 25,000 files to have a button on screen, right? So, um, OK, this is about me. Uh, very fast. I will sit down. It's faster. 
And um, yeah, I still enjoy my work. I'm a freelancer. I always was since 1997. Um, what's interesting, I have uh, a podcast. Uh, why I do podcasts? Because uh, it is easier to me to have a one, one hour conversation on conferences, not always that easy. And the last podcast is about Payara Micro versus Payara Full. Mo lots of projects ask me about that, which server should I choose? There are also a couple of podcasts about Quarkus and whatever. So whatever interests me, um, it's there. There are no ads, so it's just conversation. And uh, yeah, uh, in my personal Philosophy is to uh, learn one something and don't migrate it too much. So stick with it, and you know try to bet on kind of standard. So this is this is the idea. So uh, in the back end, I choose you know Java because the most popular language, and the front end I do JavaScript, and it works well. So I don't have to relearn the frameworks every every five minutes, right? By the way, uh, if you know my presentation, I'm really Glad if you could ask questions or say, you know, you are stupid. It doesn't work this way. My opinion is this. So this is this would be the best possible presentations for me. Otherwise, a little bit boring. Or I don't know what to do. No, is it too hard, too 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 easy, and whatever. So there are a couple of online workshops if you like. And uh, the most interesting part is AHX TV. The first Monday of the month, I answer all questions live, live streaming YouTube. So uh, how this works? There's a GitHub gist. You can ask whatever you like or almost whatever you like. And I answered this. And by the way, meanwhile, there is a community which answers the questions before they arise. So it's like uh, really fun for me. And the deal is I never answer a e technical question via email. So, uh, so it's time saver as well. And there are lots of workshops in uh, Munich Airport. Um, there are people from all over the world. Uh, usually what I do in my projects, you first see web standards without frameworks. And the other one is backend, almost without frameworks. And uh, there are already enough sufficient registration so it they will take place. And this was the last slide. So now I will close the slides and they could crash. Oh, you don't see that. Um, but you can imagine that I write something, right? So wait, wait a second. Uh, so uh, let's do this. OK. So. Um, the, the title is uh, Code Shrinking Techniques. And why this? I uh, do a lot of uh, code reviews. And in the code reviews, I see a lot of uh, code which I don't understand because uh, they are like you know ancient patterns and stuff which uh, I have no idea why they are there. And after removing all these all this things which I don't understand, everyone seems to be happier. So, um, and this I would like to talk to you, if you are working in clouds, microservice-like environments, there is a lot of stuff which you, which you don't need, and this is actually the idea. So uh, depending, the, the patterns make sense, uh, and particular patterns or techniques only make sense in particular context. But right now, the context is, I would say, so uh, strict that we can do more than five to, or 10 years ago. So th this, this would be the idea. And it's, as I said, at the, at the end, I would like to show you some new stuff. So first. For me, I spend also a lot of time with startups, uh, surprisingly. And why this? Uh, they would really like to have MicroProfile or Jakarta E without knowing what it actually is. So it's not like they come to me and say, hey, please show us J2E or Java E or some XML. No, they say, we would like to have something, right? Uh, how to build this. And if uh, I show them something with MicroProfile on Jakarta E, they will usually use it. And the question is, why that? Because time to first commit. You shouldn't underestimate that. This is actually where MicroProfile or Java e shines. Why? So in 30 seconds, you can set up the service. And this is incredibly important for beginners, uh, so smaller projects. You know, if you have to, to perform evaluations for you know, two hours to, to see Hello World on the screen, I think people will lose interest. So time to first commit, very, very important. Uh, in, um, in a larger company, a manager asked me about my opinion about low code. It's like you know, uh, programming without programming or programming with uh, visual basic-like environments, let's say. And I say, OK, what about you know, standard, uh, standard um, let's say, Java. Is like Java is too complicated? It's like, let's do a workshop. And what's turned out? The, 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 you know, everything was easy except setting up uh, Java Home 
and the Maven settings for the proxy environment. So the people spend half an hour, you know, fiddling with Java Home and Maven that they couldn't get. It's like, that's too complicated. I said, you Java is not Java, it's just Maven. You need it everywhere, right? But if they got that, everything was easy. So they, they couldn't even, they didn't know what annotations are. It's like, put, put add inject on it and it will work and they were happy, right? So this was actually an interesting experiment. Um, again, you can ask questions. So the first thing to reduce time to code is Maven archetype. And um, I created one. I always create one. So uh, what this Maven archetype does, it creates a very simple Java project. Why I do this? Because you can save time. Uh, otherwise, you know, there are, uh, um, I don't know, you can have some uh, problems uh, editing XML. And why I created my own archetype is because, actually, or do this um, 11. We can switch to Visual Studio Code later. It doesn't matter. So um, I use recently Visual Studio Code, and people ask me, so you don't use NetBeans anymore? Yes, I use NetBeans, but uh, sometimes I use something else uh, just for fun, right? So um, I need the junk, and, um, and I have the shrink project and the POM. So the POM, uh, what's different to last year probably, I don't even remember, I have pro MicroProfile 2. Now we have MicroProfile 3, which uh, comes with a little bit more, I would say, features like uh, liveness and readiness uh, checks are, uh, are there. So that's like, you know, incremental, incremental um, updates. Now the people ask me, you know, uh, is it just show? I was like, no, in my project I expect something like this plus test scope dependencies. But uh, what I don't like to see is a lot of you know, uh, uh, runtime dependencies. And with MicroProfile, you can eliminate already a lot. I show you how you can eliminate. So why this? The smaller the war, the faster the deployment. The faster the deployment, the more productive you are, and the more people can save you know, the money. So this is the basic, basic idea. Um, so this, um, this is the, uh, the whole project with uh, Maven. And uh, so there is uh, like... Uh, a JAXRS resource. Uh, usually, you will get a bins XML file which says everything is injectable. And what's new already? Because I uh, got lots of questions. There is a microprofile config, and what happens here? I can inject properties. Now, this eliminates a few lines of Java E code. What I did previously, I injected this by myself. What this does, it looks first into um, environment entries, so uh, environment variables like you know Kubernetes DC and then uh, overrides that with system properties, and uh, you can override, uh, it's not, not right. So first um, property file, then environment entries and system properties. So what it means is, what I could do right now is, I could configure my application with, uh, with, uh, with that, or actually, I could specify a default value here, override this with properties, and then override it with Kubernetes. So what it means is you don't need any configuration frameworks. This is, this is basically, done and uh, also compatible with config maps. Uh, if you would like to see this, I, I recorded a YouTube video of three minutes or whatever, how to use config maps with that. So there's actually no, um, nothing to learn. <laughs> so you just create a config map and it can be injectable. So done. What config maps is, is like what is used in the clouds. Like This is like property file with a name. This is a config map uh, in, in various clouds. But why various clouds? Because everyone I know uses Kubernetes. So. OpenShift is Kubernetes distribution, AKS, G GKA, or every, uh, Kubernetes is like, you know, Docker five years ago. So Kubernetes still needs Docker, but this, um, I would, no one talks about uh, Marathon or, or, or other schedulers. Right? Still no questions? I think it's too early, right? So uh, you, are, uh, you are in uh, some different mode, like, you know, blue screen mode. There are no more blue screens, there are white screens, there's other screens, right? The, 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 the color changed, I think, what, what I heard. So we have that. Now, how to deploy applications? So first, uh, in a, in a uh, workshop, JavaScript workshop, someone asked me, you know, a JavaScript developer, what you're doing with the EDE, you are saving, and why you have to save to deploy it? What do you have in JavaScript, like Gulp Watcher, it watches the files, and on every change, it, it ships the files to production. And I say, actually, I have no idea why, why something is not there, because it's incredibly easy to implement. And I've wrote a small tool with Java SE 7. It's like five classes. And what this thing does is it watches uh, changes in your file system with uh, Watcher. And now it's timer because it's faster. 
and then tries to find Maven, says Maven can install and copies a, a file. And I use it all the time, it is as very easy, and I don't need any plugins, and um, I would just do, to fire it up, um, it doesn't actually matter. So the executive is saying like Maven can install copy. This is what I usually did, did all the time. And this is a little bit automated. It's one jar, has nothing to do with Java E, it's written with Java SE 7, so it's just, it was just an idea. And uh, because it's less, less a magic than some plugins, I would like to use it. So what I have here, oh, what is that? OSGI is not my thing. So uh, what I have here in shrink, I have here a project which I created, and I would like to, to start what? And what, what does, it, um, it builds the four kilob kilobyte war and deploys that to all the servers I have. And in the blueprint, you will see Open Liberty, Tommy, Payara, Whitefly. So the idea is if something doesn't work, I can you know, fire up Whitefly or, or Tommy or whatever and see whether it works on the different server. So this is the basic idea. And because it doesn't take me nothing, it deploys everywhere. So this is, this is this what, what happens. Now, and b because you probably say, no, WebSphere is big, um, I would like to start with Java 11. Uh, the Liberty is like the newer version of WebSphere. And uh, it doesn't work. Uh, exception in <coughs> has been launched already. Wait a second. So something already works. Uh, kill Java. Kill Java again. Start Liberty. J11. It's Java 11. Start Liberty. Now it works. So you should never try to start application service twice. So uh, it already run uh, in the background. So uh, what is H? So uh, what, what was Java? So it was also killed. And now Liberty started, and this what is started. And in the what RC, uh, you will see, this is on my GitHub, completely free. You can download the jar and launch it. You will see exactly the same effect, if you like. So now, what we get now, what we get is the following. If I switch to the Firefox and go to local host 9080 is open liberty with uh, update available so i think they have three f uh, four or more updates a year even monthly updates or or quarterly updates so they they upgraded that and this is actually the um the current status of all servers you get four uh, four new versions a year uh with uh, minor features uh, because you get four micro profile versions a year so a uh, micro profile you get four new re releases a year and Jakarta E and Java E is more stable platform. So first, um, so I have that, and uh, sh shrink was I think shrink and resources and pink. So enjoy Jakarta E with micro profile. So this was the micro profile config seems to work. So now, uh, oh my netbeans is killed, or I killed my netbeans. So let's start it again. And then hack some code. So um, NetBeans, and what if you know? I think I always what I did in in, in Krakow is the following. I always do something Dragon related, and uh, so let's do the Dragon thing again. Now a little bit different. What you can do? Uh, I would like to kill some uh, tons of code with that. The dragon has a name, and I asked last year, but I forgot. Uh, and uh, it has like uh, fire power, right? And so that's all. And the dragon can be exposed here. And let, let's say we would use the name of the message here. So the name would be enjoy which is not really good for a dragon, but, uh, and because of the team, of course, 42. And um, produces, I have to, to uh, I have a WebSphere right now, or WebSphere Liberty, or Open Liberty. So I, I have to tell to use JSON. So now, if I repeat that, you see this is JSON. And by the way, uh, the, the what thing deploys, where is it deploys be behind the scenes here. 
So the war is four kilobyte and it builds in two seconds and deploys that. So on every save it deploys. So I have about 100 or more deploys a day. So this is, this is my working schedule. And I don't care about the service. I take whatever my clients have and just go with it. So time to first commit is the very first. So the easier. Uh, yesterday night uh, uh, I got an email, something doesn't work. So I had to reproduce the environment. So it's also always important to me you know, to, to be quickly to create some, some proof of concepts very, very quickly. Or, you know, you probably have meetings, and I don't like meetings a lot. So before we discuss things in meetings, it's, very, it's easier to, to start a proof of concept so, um, and, 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 you know, show real code. Now, still questions? No questions. Now, what we got, of course, no, of course, it's not. But the first thing which you can remove is Swagger. So what you get for free is Open API. So Open API, so we have the uh, Swagger generated from the JSONB which is Jakarta and microprofile automatically, so a tons of annotations can be already removed. And the Swagger dependency is not needed because if you have to perform some customizations, there is an API annotations, API response, and so forth. They come from microprofile, and they are already on the server. And all servers, most servers I know, have some proprietary advancements. So already, I can go, oh, there are two. Um, this is bad. Wait a second. What I have to do is... This was yesterday, a proof of concept, exactly. And just deploy it again. So shrink. There are multiple ap applications deployed on the uh, Liberty. I deleted all and re redeployed the application. So there is a, a get pink. So, um, I, and I see this is JSON, try it out. And I get the firepower. So, um, and this is now, uh, WebSphere, so if my clients are WebSphere, this is the experience. And uh, as you saw in the war, there is no setup needed. The only thing what I did is I added microprofile dependency at, uh, to be able to compile microprofile. But right now, I'm not even using microprofile. It comes um, out of the box. There is no effective microprofile dependency. OK, cool. So this um, is already nice. And um, so what we learned from that is uh, this kills all DTOs and all mappers. So I think this is the new data transfer object if you really need it. This is a JSONB. It is customizable. And for me, it's actually really nice. It's uh, everything which has public attributes. You don't need getters and setters. It's, uh, it's just a you know, data transporter. So we use it all the time. With that, it already saves weeks in project. No mappers, no, no nothing like this. And uh, sometimes even we make it persistent if we have to with, uh, with entities. And if this comes from no elastic search, it is like it is. This is the new data transporter. Questions so far? And if it has to be flexible, this is what I showed you pro probably last year. I use JSON P, which I would like to skip because it's more boring. JSON P, -P is like, um, it's like hash map. Uh, you know JSON P? JSON P? It, it, yeah, it is like hash map. I would just say add, 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 and uh, build, and, 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 and return it. So I would like to skip that because it's obvious. This is not that obvious, and I think uh, beautiful. So at the, at, at the beginning, I hated that because of the public fields, but I thought, actually, it's a very good idea because everyone knows now this is like data transporter. OK? So why make it private private and get us and set us doesn't make any sense. Yes? I stop them oh, almost all cases, only if they are needed. Okay. So they are optional. Yeah, but I stopped using them 10 years ago, probably. But, but, but now this is uh, now the last, I mean. Except that it uh, No, it cannot be immutable. I mean, you can always set it. But uh, if, you, if you look at the Java E applications, we don't have layers. So you will immediately see that something tries to, 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 to change the object, right? So I know what I mean. So in theory, it is bad. But in practice, nothing happens. So I perform lots of code reviews and never saw that someone tries to know to, 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 uh, know, to fiddle with DTOs. So we have other problems in projects than you know, protecting private state of DTOs, I would say. OK? So what you see here is not necessarily the absolute best practice. Is this what, I, what, what works in projects? And if you have you know, strict architects, you, you can run into trouble with that. And you will have to you know to configure Sonar a little bit. So if you have you know, so, Sonar-driven development, doesn't work well with that. OK? Cool. Now, let's move on. So if we have a Java class, and let's say uh, Dragon 
Dragon's Castle. And the castle uh, d uh, public uh, dragon show dragon, right? And there is the dragon on the other side, e even functional with some fire, if you, of the river. New dragon, and this is like, uh, this is what you told me yesterday. No, this is the name of the dra uh, dragon? Okay, so almost is the name of the of the dragon. So uh, let's do this, and uh, of course I can inject that. No wonder. So inject dragon castle castle, and just use this here instead of so this this castle uh, show. Now cool, but what I could do? Uh, uh, let's see whether it works first. So I can go here and get, try, too many buttons. Uh, firepower zero. Execute, exactly. Uh, yeah, this is the new one. And 42, so actually, yeah. People like to click, but curl is always better. But uh, we have the feature right now. Yes! Okay, a little bit. So, uh, editor fonts, 24. This is for developers who already know JDK 1.2. This is the font size. So, um, now we have this, and now let's say uh, we have here an exception. Throw new runtime exception. Uh, Dragon sleeps. So no dragon, basically. And uh, wait a second. What I will do, what I like to do is curl now. You know, so the buttons wor are working, but this is faster. So um, localhost uh, 9080. Uh, shrink resources and pink. Resources resor Sys and pink. And what you see is nothing because, so internal error, which is not nice. And um, what I see a lot is no, uh, lots of exceptions. Um, hierarchies, remappings, and stuff like that. But what you can do actually, this is an old trick. You can say sleeping dragon exception, dragon exception, which extends, you already probably know it, but uh, in my projects, still no web application exception, and now I can go here and say um, response uh, status, let's say 400, um, and response for headers, uh, info, message, Build, done. So with that, and I have to use it, I would say new sleeping dragon exception. Uh, I get bad requests with info dragon sleeps. So you see the, all the remappings uh, is obsolete. What you can do right now, you can create exceptions which maps themselves to the proper HTTP status code. So with that, you can, you can, you can save a tons of code what I usually see, you know, some exception, custom exception is thrown, you know, in some, in some class, then remap twice, and at the end, you know, uh, there is an exception handler or exception mapper, which tries to investigate afterwards what actually happened. So with that, you can remove, I would say, at least 50K of code from your project. Cool? Now, we can say, this is nice, but we should try to wake up the dragon. So I can say retry, uh, max retries twice. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. So now start that, takes a little bit longer. And uh, where is the, uh, 
wake up attempt, wake up attempt, wake up attempt. So the first call, uh, so what it means is, this is a microprofile fault tolerance. This is the replacement of Hystrix, which is that anyway. Uh, uh, like uh, one year ago, someone asked me, you know, why you are not using Hystrix? Uh, Hystrix was created by Netflix, and Netflix cannot be wrong. And they killed Hystrix, so, and because they cannot be wrong, so it was obsolete. So now, now we have uh, three uh, wake up attempts. And what you can do right now is say, okay, but uh, if this doesn't work, please uh, go to the uh, default method called, uh, let's say, robot dragon or cyber dragon. Cyber dragon. And there is a method called uh, dragon, cyber dragon. And it says, you know, dragon. I am real 13, whatever. So now, if I do it again, ah, I have too many terminals. Drinks. Uh, wait a second, I close that one. I will close this one. This is, in, this is important. This is no idea what it is, and this can be closed, and this is needed. And we see firepower 13 9 I'm real. So what it happens, it tried to know three times, and then fallback was invoked. And this is uh, fault tolerance, also available on all servers. Um, I use it a little bit, but uh, this was actually the main driver for, for Hystrix. And um, with a little bit of time, I would show you uh, uh, Bulkheads, of course, everyone would like to have bulkhead and circuit breakers and every, everything is in place. It's part of the standard. If you, the thing is, uh, if you really need it, you can just use it. Okay? Questions? You mentioned one more annotation, bulkhead. What is it? What bulkhead is, uh, so. Value on waiting task queue. What bulkheads is, is uh, more or less important. Let's say we would communicate with different uh, microservices. And uh, let's imagine, or imagine, this is like it is, the uh, Open Liberty on, or, or, or Open Liberty optimizes itself. But the other application servers are more or less a fixed set of threads. If we will now just call unprotected uh, microservice and the, unpro uh, the, uh, the microservice is slow, but it works, it will consume all the all the threads, and the server will just be be uh, all the resources will be you now occupied for this microservice. So with the bulkheads, you can say two threads, two threads, two threads, and you can you can share or you can spread the resources between microservices. So, so if you have one microservice is too slow, the calls to all other microservices will work. And the most famous already built-in bulkhead use case are admin consoles of application servers. So if you have an uh, application server, um, uh, they have admin consoles, and they always have dedicated thread pools with two threads, so you can al always access the console even though the application server is overloaded. And uh, as a small best practice, all the metrics you're exposing, actually, they have to be exposed via bulkhead. Otherwise, if the server is on the heavy load, Prometheus won't be able to gather the metrics. Cool? So I will skip all the other fault tolerance patterns you should remember, it's already built in, and if it's building, you can save time. You don't have to investigate. It's already part of the whole thing. Now, micro yes, okay. uh, microprofile, what I have is microprofile 2.1. Just microprofile 3 is the current one. Um, and for me, microprofile is like a Java E. I don't make a huge difference. The only thing is, uh, the, you see, microprofile this different um, import statement. This is what I wanted to do. So I could show you some slides, but you know, code is always faster. So um, now, I w what, what I would like to do is, uh, let's say the boring stuff where everyone is excited, right? So what I see a lot is, wow, we have um, metrics, so you can do it here meters. So with that, what I get is the following. So this works, and what I could do is localhost 9080, 9080 slash metrics. And I have the uh, open metrics. So in three hours, the standardized open metrics, which are actually Prometheus metrics. And now the cool story is with application, I get now my application counter. 
So you see here the metric of the method. So this is a little bit boring in my projects because these metrics, and by the way, they are, they are immediately usable. So what I could do now, I could set up here a Prometheus setup, Prometheus. And what, pro what, what it just does, it opens a predefined YAML file. I'm not very good with editing YAML. And, um, and 9080, should be 9080. And this is a uh, dragon. And uh, and I forgot the port number ninety. Where is it? You see the ninety ninety. Thanks you. Ninety ninety, and we have already the metrics available to Prometheus. So what I did is from scratch, I expose a metric and it can be gathered by Prometheus and exposed via Grafana and, and with Alert Manager we could react you know, to, s to slow performance. But this is not that exciting. So what's really exciting is, I think we have uh, DVOXPL, does it work? Okay, it works. Now, what I could do, let's say uh, conference, Scanner. I could actually do the following uh, string get devox content and um, post contract public uh, void init client and the client and the client is. Uh, client builder, new client, and by the way, or new builder, what we get new is uh, connect timeout, execute read timeout, and execute a service, which is kind of a bulkhead. This client can be not only asynchronous, it could be also reactive, so I can specify how many threads this client get to access DevOps page, right? Bulkhead again to protect the server. I will skip that because um, you know it right now, so. Uh, New client is the thing, new client. And this is JAXRS stock, nothing new here. Uh, this client. And this client um, target. And should be this, DevOps PL, hopefully it works. And uh, this is this DevOps. And uh, now what I could do is this devox, devox is also cool, but uh, request, request Q, it's very important. Uh, get response, response. And now it's interesting, so response, response, read entity string class. But I would like to introduce some monitoring here. And what I could do is I can say add inject uh, metric registry. registry. So what I would like to show that you do all the time, business metrics, more, inter more interesting than you know, pointless counting of methods. So um, I think it's registry type, very good. Uh, and I would like to introduce the business metric. And now what I can do, I can say registry uh, counter, and this is devox status plus response get status inc. And what happens now? Nothing because I always have to invoke, still, still invoke the classes, right? We have, this is like, uh, where's my class? Uh, conference scanner, it is here. So now, ping resource, conference scanner, ah, inject conference scanner scanner 
and uh, oh, unfortunately, string uh, conf at get path conf and return scanner dot get devops content. Hopefully, it will work. Um, now, uh, devops Poland looks good. Shrink, and this was conf. You see, it works. So we got the beautiful, you know, uh, conference page with links. We would even, you know, links the old browser. So you should something see on the screen. But what I wanted to show you is the following: uh, matrix application. You see, application DevOps status 200. So there was one successful call. So what I did, I created a metric on the fly. And if the page would go down, which I could show you by disable the wireless LAN, it would be counter probably, you know, 400 or whatever, 401. So I have here an invocation counter with all status codes. You understand what I did? No? Yes? This is the counter here. So this is new. DevOps status. So I know the, uh, the external microservice via HTTP was invoked once with 200. So I in created a dynamic counter which counts, you know, all the status code with one liner. And I use the counters all the time. The most important metric to me are counters. How, how many, you know, dragons were woke up? How many invocations were not successful? This is the most important thing. How many items have you sold? How many fraud attempts there were? Just, you know, to get an idea what happens. And in the continuous integration pipeline, what I do, we expose the metrics first, then with JMH, Java Micro Benchmark, harness, we generate a lot of load and then compare our threshold with that what is exposed via the metrics. So then how, how do you get the thread for the metrics? Uh, in uh, Whitefly, it's already there. So in Whitefly, it already go, uh, comes via the admin port 9200. Uh, and in Open Liberty, you can expose it. And in uh, uh, Payara, you will also create an HTTP endpoint, I think it's called. So you only have to, to create an endpoint and dedicate two threads and you are done. Okay? By a micro profile. And this what you see, this strange thing has nothing to do with micro profile. This format is called open metrics. And uh, this is what the cloud's providers are using because Prometheus, Prometheus is the quasi standard, I would say. What I cannot show you right now, we get distributed tracing for, for, for free as well. This is distributed tracing API. So all the microservices will send requests to a common instance, and the common instance is Jaeger.io. This is also CNCF. has nothing to do with microprofile, but it's already standardized, right? Cool. So, and what, what I really like, time to first commit, you saw, uh, 25 deployments today, and the, a kilo, the, the, the whole package is the 7K, and the average build time was uh, two seconds. Okay, how much time do we have? 10 minutes. So um, now kill that and kill, what is it? Uh, looks like Liberty. No, NetBeans. Also not needed. Liberty, not needed. So everything was killed almost. Uh, pro uh, the Prometheus also not needed. And now something interesting, hopefully. What about Kubernetes? So what I did it. I created a war, so um, I will just close whatever I can. This is also not needed. Okay, so now we have this. So I have a war which was created several times, and this is the war, and the war is 7K somewhere. So where is the war? In target uh, is uh, 7K, yes. And what I, what I also have is Kubernetes and OpenShift running in, in, in background and Docker as well, which makes it a little bit slow to hold my environment. But what I would like to do is um, Paya, uh, Payara S2I, um, Payara Micro S2I, and uh, the project name is Shrink. So what I already have is uh, OpenShift is running in, in background. And here it is empty. So there is nothing there. And uh, what I would like to do is to run the application in OpenShift. And what I showed you right now is not really like you know, conference mode where I just ship default application server. This is S2I, stands for source to image. 
and is the possibility to fully configure the server over and over again. So, uh, so you, you, you are able to set up data sources, set up the bulkheads on the application server, do whatever is needed. Um, and I will use Payara Micro uh, because I use usually Payara full all the time. So, and uh, what it does, it just fires up Maven because I always forget it. And it created an app already. And as you can see, the application is now uh, on Kubernetes. It is starting. And uh, now it is scaling. And now we have the application running on Kubernetes OpenShift uh, Cloud. Uh, some sti startups, we use the same approach for Microsoft Asia or Google. And it's exactly the same because it's Kubernetes. So um, we can actually test locally and push to the cloud whenever we like. Standard war, as I said, there's no tricks, nothing. It's, um, yeah. And of course, um, what, uh, let's see whether it works. If I go here and say, what was it? Shrink, shrink resources pink. So it works now, I'm real in the cloud, right? So now, the cool story is, watch this. So we have the application server running here on the cloud, my private cloud. OC, scale, DC, and uh, I think it's shrink, replicas equals two. So now we have two services running. And uh, the same experience you get with Whitefly and the same with, with Payara. So this is what we do. We, uh, we, we actually uh, have a local development. On every push, this happens on, on uh, OpenShift or Kubernetes. It's the same. OK. Now, uh, six minutes to go, so I can show you something else. So now, OC delete all minus L app equals shrink. And now, clouds is dead. So, no more clouds. I will skip Docker. It's obvious that it also work, works in Docker because Docker is behind the scenes. So I usually show Docker. Everyone is excited because it's fast, but forget Docker. It, it will build and start in one second or something. OK? Uh, any questions still? No. Then, set up uh, Quarky. And, uh, and now do the proper, proper dragon. Uh, set up Quarky, dragon. So what is Quarkus? What I like about Quarkus, we'll say in a second, because it's hard to explain. And um, on slides, dragon. So now we don't need this anymore and um, this anymore, and this anymore. So um, code, now we can switch also a bit here. So now what I have here, I have project like the last one, so pink resource, so it is identical. This is what I like, it's like um, all micro profiles and part of Java are supported. Um, so, and the POM, I know the current version is 16.1, so I would like to use the current one. And um, this basically it. So, what if, you, if I clean and install the project? So, now there is some additional magic going on, and what I get back is a jar, which is uh, 316K. It's a little bit larger than the last one. And the, 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 the reason why it's so large, this is core key is my Maven archetype, which I created with all micro profile dependencies, all I need in projects. So this is the largest possible uh, Quarkus size. You can ask yourself, OK, is this 300 kilobyte? Is, uh, why it is so small or so big? So it is uh, way bigger than the uh, war, right? But uh, too small for the whole runtime. And the cool story in Quarkus, the first thing, which is really cool, is all the dependencies are in lib folder. You can say why it's cool. I mean, <laughs> the jar is 300k, and we, I get 45 uh, dependencies in, in lib because of Docker. The cool story is we get the same separation as in Java E out of the box in Quarkus. So in my projects, in evaluations, it's too early. Uh, Quarkus came in March and was usable in April. So it's like three months really, really usable. But uh, what we already do in evaluations, we put all the libs in a base Docker layer, and we deploy the th uh, 316K you know, all the time. And the base Docker layer only changes if Qu Quarkus changes. It's the same story as uh, war and application servers. So this is not a fed jar 
which is very good because I never got the Fed jars and Uber jars because why I have you know to rebuild the whole stuff if only 5k changes. I mean, this is I never got it, but uh, now they do this right. I mean, they, they don't even attempt you know to rebuild all the stuff. And uh, the cool story is, of course, um, um, you can Java minus jar, you can start the runner. And it starts immediately. This is the slowest possible start because, as you can see, I added everything I need. You know, from from this is the whole micro profile, and uh, transactions and 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 uh, JSON B and 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 JTA transactions and EGET distributed tracing. So this is not what you usually see at conferences. It's Quarkus from my project with all the dependencies I need. So it's the largest possible Quarkus. Okay. Now, one thing which you can also save a lot of time is the following. And by the way, um, the Payara S2i and Payara Micro are on my uh, GitHub account. This is, um, the, the, this is no magic, actually. Uh, if you like, you can use the builder. So this is a standard way in OpenShift to build servers. Whitefly is already built in. So if you have Whitefly, there's nothing to do. And I created these S2i images for Payara and Payara Micro. OK? So this, uh, actually, it's very easy. It's a script with 70 lines of bash code. So this is the S2i. So there's nothing, no magic there. So, um, OK, so this is, and this, and this, watch and deploy. Now, one thing we can also save a lot of time is the following. So we have ping resource. And let's say, what about that? I would like to inject a principle. Principle, and the principle has a name. And what I also would like to have is this JSON web token. Why would I like to have it? Because we have web frontends, and they like to have tokens. Inject. Now, and what I can do, I can say here, token get, get groups. So now. It's done. So I got asked quest why you don't showing us, you know, some Java security and authentication and authorization because now it's done. There's nothing else to do. So this is done. And now you know the problem starts. How to get the token, key cloak, and all the stuff, all the setup. And um, so what I did, I created a small tool which generates tokens for testing purposes. Uh, there's always a little bit of pain. In test, I would like to be, you know, the chief, the admin, or the guest, and, uh, and how to test that. So I created a, a Java tool again. It's called JW uh, Jotunizer. So it's also Jotunizer SH. So it's just had nothing to do with Java. It just created tokens. But this was for me for testing the stuff. And now I can. You would like to sh show you two things. First, how to test it, and second, how to use JSON Web Token for authentication and authorization in micro profile. And so all application servers, because all application servers uh, support that. And the cool story is what you can uh, minimize proprietary servlet filters from Keycloak. You don't need them anymore. So you can remove all the stuff, for instance. All the setup is no more needed. OK, uh, now, Jotunizer. So what it does, it creates uh, a an, an, an call for tests with the included bearer token. And what it also creates is microprofile properties with the public key. Because uh, how it works is the private key is on Keycloak. It signs the tokens, and the public key is used for to verify the tokens. So you need both, right? And um, so I would like to copy the microprofile properties to source main resources. I think application properties. This should be the place. Let's see. Um, this is the configuration microprofile configuration 950. Sounds right. So and then what I also would like would have to do is to say I forgot that this is. Um, Permit all, so because we would like just to find out. And this is the standard Java E annotations. I could use ROS allowed, whatever you like. So and I can inject all the claims as well. So now, if I will launch, uh, how it's called, uh, Maven clean install. And by the way, Maven compile. Quarkus dev, there is a dev mode which watches the files. I don't need the what anymore. This is this is done by Quarkus. Let's see. 
So now it watches my changes and will re redeploy the changes on every, on every uh, file change, on every save. So, and this would be uh, 8080, and this was, I think, ping, right? As you can see, okay, my Hello Duke, Hacker and Chief, there are two roles. And the question is where the roles are stored, and the roles are stored in uh, J2 token JSON. So I can, I can store the roles here, they are red, the, the, uh, the JSON web token is generated and passed. But um, the point is, what you see here, what happens is, from the JSON web token principle, the principle is created, and from the uh, JSON web token groups, the roles are created automatically without any additional configuration. So this is also so-called microprofile JWT. Okay? Questions? No questions? And the last thing, nothing. So the JSON web token is self-contained. You only need authorization server you know, for the, to get the token. But if you already have it, it works. So, and what you saw here, a small, I just created a small tool which creates the tokens, which is, has nothing to do with Java E, and I used the token on, 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 on the thing, right? So, so what, what it means is, if I change it uh, here, so if I go here and say, I would like to be, you see, these are the groups, uh, also the dragons, and uh, this is the user principle, is, uh, and just regenerate that. I give dragons and uh, Vavil is the principal. And the information is encoded here. So forget the tool, the first time I was able to demonstrate how the security actually works, because I got lots of questions showing us like, uh, without the server, I cannot show you how to get a token. Okay? So time to first commit how easy it is to set up authentication authorization, and I just use Quarkus to show you Quarkus, but it will work on Open Liberty and all the servers, actually. This is a very well-documented feature, feature. And the last one, we're a little bit over time, but uh, create. I would like to start, oh, wrong folder. Create a project just blank. Uh, this is the usual way how to start Quarkus projects. Yes, yes. So now a Maven clean install. So it started, activity monitor Java uses, uh, this is this one, uh, memory it uses, oh, a lot, oh, wait a second. Um, sometimes it is the uh, Visual Studio Code, the language server, two, no, exactly, this is 250 megabyte, um, so it is less than Visual Studio Code. Now, I would just kill that, and what I can do is clean install minus p native. With Quarkus, the whole deal is, because it knows about the Java programming model, all the dependencies, it is able to cross-compile to native code, which I do right now, so what I get is binary, which com comprises Java, all the code, and all the dependencies. And this start, it starts in 200 milliseconds, and usually uh, the size is a view max, so you get it for free. So the cool story is, yeah, some ask me now about Quarkus, whether we use it in production. We could, but we don't have it. We don't have to. The cool story is we can start with Open Liberty or Whitefly, and if Quarkus doesn't work, we can just fall back to the other ones, so or there is a no real you know, dependency, which I really like. Okay? Questions? Right. So that seems easy when you start a new application from scratch, but what about the existing applications which uses, let's say, Spring Boot, Hibernate, 
Spring Boot is out of my realm, but uh, in J2E and Java E, whatever we do is, is always the same. We remove all the superfluous dependencies, and then we split the application apart. And Spring Boot is like uh, a, a alternative to Quarkus. If you have already Spring Boot, you should be happy and forget about Quarkus. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> so what Quarkus is it? Is the runner? Or what, what, what Quarkus is, is um, OK. Um, Wait a second, I would just like to start it. I, st I started, otherwise, you know, the whole effect is gone. So this is the runner, ls minus lh. The runner is 20 max. And if I run it, it already started. You see how fast it was. And uh, there should be blank. And the memory consumption is 8, ma 8 max. It's like Go library. So uh, what Quarkus is, Quarkus is uh, a framework which uh, framework, a runtime, which relies on Java programming model, CDI. Everything is CDI. And they come with one trick. All the dependencies are called Quarkus extensions. And they move whatever was uh, dynamic at runtime to build time. So what they do is they search all the dependencies, they parse all the XML files. So the runtime is tiny because the application server or Quarkus runtime doesn't need any more uh, XML parsers, deployments. This is just a static, more or less static library. So the cool story is this is what I really like, Quarkus. You know, they use you know the 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 the, the Java e programming model and just seek in, and go further. It's not like a change. It's an extreme optimization in the right direction. So then even try not to create a super jar for what they created a small jar which references if you open this in manifest MF, there are dependencies to all the class pass dependencies to all the libs. It is server runtime, but you always get one jar, a Java jar or a native jar. And uh, Docker is well integrated. Kubernetes, they have extensions for Kafka, Kubernetes, uh, whatever. There are 45 extensions. And it's really well documented, right? But the idea is move whatever possible to build time. And I also create Quarkus extension in my GitHub, if you like. Take, take a look on this, but this is pointless. What I wanted to show you, how much code and you can save and how much productive you can become. And this is what I do all the time. So actually, we split the applications all the time. And the main challenge is to understand the business behind, not the technique. Technology. So we remove all the frameworks, and if we know what's going on, you can split it. Cool. If you li like stickers, here are stickers. Thank you. And 15 minutes are too short, but hopefully it was something interesting. And uh, see you next year.